My name is Dr. Michael Brown, and this is Three Words, a bite-sized podcast about the simple and yet strategic choices that all of us can make in order to feel fully alive. Speaking of being fully alive, today in the studio, I have with me Steve Risky, pastor and clinical counselor who has spent a large part of his adult life helping people flourish, not only in life, not only in occupation, but most specifically in relationships so that even as a society, we will be the very best version of ourselves. Today, we talk about these three very interesting and even provocative words that fear repels love. We deeply want to be loved and be, to be known and to be cherished and to be cared deeply about. We want people in our life who really seek out our very, very best and want our good and yet we're afraid of it. We're terrified of being in relationships and being in context and being in, the, in corporations and even in families and friendship circles where we're not really seen, where we're not heard, where we are not loved because we are, whether we like to admit it or not, afraid. Listen to this episode. Steve Risky, people talk about you. When I have you on Three Words podcast doing another episode, they're like, that was so deep. In fact, as I think about our episodes that we do together, I give a little thought to some of the episodes, but never with you because I'm like, he's going to have so many great, insightful things to say. I just listen and keep asking questions and let you kind of do your thing. Today is really unique, though. These three words. Okay. Fear repels love. Fear repels love. That's probably one of the most unique three-word phrases we've ever had on the up on Three Words Podcast. Tell me more. Okay. So... Many people may have heard the famous love, you know, like perfect love casts out all fear, right? Like there's this idea that love, when it, when it really works, fear, fear disappears. But in my years as a, as a counselor and the things that I've done, I've realized that they're kind of like oil and water. If one's there, the other's not. And so it works backward as well. If perfect love casts out fear, then believe that as wherever we harbor fear, wherever fear reigns, love will get shoved out. So fear and love are two power words on yeah, either side yeah. of this three word phrase. And I'm presuming that those who are listening and watching today, they think a lot about fear and they think a lot about love. So let's mm -hmm. kind of talk about each of those separately and let's then connect them. So talk to me about fear. Fear. Fear is the sense that my well-being is going to be stolen from me in some direction. And so, of course, I want to have physical well-being. And so if I'm walking down a dark alley and I'm afraid of getting beaten up, right, that, that's fear. Or, or even afraid of having my wallet stolen, my financial well-being. But in relationships, we're not really generally worried about the physical pain or that kind of thing. What really is the fear is that this person who is supposed to be dedicated to my well-being doesn't want it. And so that they would rather uh, maybe reject me. Uh, rejection is this look and says, I see what you are there. And I go, ew. Mm -hmm. and, and, or abandonment says, I see what you are there. You're not worth it. And I'll, I'll get out of here. Or, or, uh, or the various versions of hate. Hate says, I see what you are there and I want bad for you. And, and we know that there's people out in the world who will reject us and pull away. But when the ones who we deeply want to love us put that specter that maybe they'll pull away or abandon or whatever, fear. Hit pause on that. Wow, that's so good. Talk to me about love. All right. Love, for our purposes, so the famous definition, love is the ability to will the good of another, right? Mm. But uh, in my experience, I think love is the same thing as gift giving. Okay. Think about Christmas. Like, in order to get you a gift for Christmas, if I don't know you, I, I'll just get you something of value. You know, here, here's a here's a gift card or something, right? I, I know I've given you value, right? But if I know you well, and and one of the reasons these are easy for us is, is for the audience's sake, you and I have been friends for like 30 years or yeah, something. I've lost time. track forever, right? <laughs> and so these things are so easy because I know you and I know your heart and I know how you're made. And so when I want to give you something, I can say, because I know Michael, I can meet him there, right? So love requires both the ability to desire good for the other and knowing them well enough to know what would give them goodness, right? So it's like, uh, so it, when Christmas comes, gift giving time, we have so many people we give gifts to where it's simply just giving value, but the gifts we're excited about, the ones we can't wait to give are the ones we're like, I know you and you're going to want this and you're going to open it and you will feel known and loved. There's love. Okay. So fear repels love, that three-word phrase, you're describing it in the context of re relationship. Let's go there first. Let's mm -hmm. talk about what this phrase looks like in the context of romantic relationship. 
that's the, the really greatest place to start because on every level, the person who professes to love us, especially like our spouses, they're saying, I will be dedicated to your well-being. I won't stop being dedicated to your well-being and I will know you so well, I will know what gives you well-being. Hmm. So that's the, that's the dream, right? That's like the romantic uh, movie version of it. And yet what we really find is couples terrified of one another because I don't believe I'm known or even worse, I believe I'm known, but they don't want good for me. And they'll use that knowledge of me to hurt me or to reject me or to shove me away. And so we find so many couples living out these long years with one another, mm. not wanting to move away because it's too difficult or maybe there's kids on the line or something. And yet deeply longing for the other to love them. And by the way, usually if I could get them to be honest, they would both say, I really still love them, but they hate me. Mm. You see, fear. It's hiding in the middle, right? But I'm guessing something changes because all new relationships have that kind of enthusiasm, that expression that you're talking about, Mm -hmm. where I really feel like I'm learning about you, I'm knowing you, I'm dating you, I'm engaged to you, if we can use that term. And and then something, what changes? Well, there's a, there's a, some biology here. Because let me just ask, so you, you, I'm assuming, presuming the things you're talking about aren't happening in the first week of dating. Well, again, I was about to say, there is some biology here. Okay. Okay. For whatever reason, our bodies during the first somewhere around six months to a year of being with a person, it secretes a hormone that mimics cocaine. Okay. So, so at first the relationship itself actually internally provides a high sense of well being for quite a while. As long as, Without as long fear. As things are going well, because yeah. it, it feels so good. Yeah. But when that feeling starts to go away, and it, it goes away for everybody, because our bodies stop doing the cocaine thing, what begins to take over is something more profound. Hmm. And that is the knowledge, not that this relationship makes me feel good, but, but that other one there, this is when it works, right? That other one there, they are profoundly into my well-being, and they love seeing me flourish. And it works for what it goes both ways. That's a successful relationship. I want to pause here in the middle of this episode to invite you, if you're enjoying these kind of conversations, particularly today with Steve, that you would subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on our podcast platform, and refer us to a friend, particularly on this topic. But then fear enters in at some point. Is that usually what well, brings the fear into so, a healthy relationship? So let's talk about where that might come from, right? Okay. So one of them is because the feeling went away. So some people interpret that as, oh, the magic's gone. Something's wrong. Right? They don't make me feel that way. I wonder, and we begin to use all of our past wounds and our sense of like, maybe I'm not good enough to make them feel that way or whatever. And and these things can take over and that can just take any old relationship. But what if I've really been hurt? Hmm. What if um, my parents, instead of instilling in me a message, uh, you have what it takes, or, or, or your being is something that someone else would want. What if instead my parents... Maybe their own fears, maybe their own wounded, maybe they pulled away, maybe whatever. They emotionally were gone. And I've experienced that incredible abandonment that might have come from there. And so now I limp into adulthood going, I bet you I'm probably going to be abandoned. And so now, like, like a sentinel standing on the wall, standing lookout, I look for any shred of you pulling away. Mm. And as soon as I see it, I say, I knew it. My fear, you see how my fear took over and began to interpret the situation, began to press into the relationship and began to change even what I was seeing. So even if I'm moving toward you with this gift giving love that you've Mm -hmm. described, the fact that you're starting to react in this fearful way that feels awkward and even, does it feel scary to me then? Or what happens there that's causing the love that I'm trying to move in your direction to change as well? Well, of course, let's imagine that you've had the bad day. You've had the day where you came home and there was just no life left to give. You have no gifts to give. You have nothing to Mm -hmm. pour out. And instead of me going, I'm a gift giver. I see you there. I want you to feel well and I want to bring repair and wellness. If the sentinel, the fear standing on the watch of my, uh, the watchtower of my heart goes, they're pulling away. Mm -hmm. So instead of thinking, oh, this one needs love, I'll think they're pulling away. It's probably me something's wrong and I'll begin to protect. I'll begin to use my protections to try to keep my heart from being hurt. And then what you'll feel is instead of, because maybe you came home longing for life, you see me pull away and now you're feeling inadequate. So guess what you're going to start to feel? Fear. Yeah. Right. So then there's a cycle that goes on. Mm-hmm. How do we break that cycle? Whew. Well, let's talk about it. 
So there's, there's two parts. Okay. One, what if it's true? In other words, um, people are judgmental. People don't maintain their ability to love all that spectacularly. And so what if when you came home and you were cold to me, what if it actually was me or whatever? And now I'm in this situation where I feel abandonment because you really are having a problem with me. In that case, am I going to use my fear to pull even further away, which will only compound it and then we'll move further apart? Or will I use courage because courage is the opposite of fear, to move towards you and say, I seem like I'm hurting you there. Can I fix it? You know, I've often heard you say the most powerful words are, I'm sorry, or some version Ten of most that. important words. I was wrong. I am sorry. Will you forgive me? There you go, right? Okay. okay. But in order to do that, in order to get to those 10 powerful words, I'm going to have to have courage. I'm going to have to overcome my fear because the thing that was there before I said I'm sorry is they're rejecting me. They're abandoning me. They're pulling away. I hate this. I want to, yeah. and I want to hide. Yeah. Right? And so you see how fear can keep us from getting to that powerful state, but courage will go right past it to say, I would rather say, I'm sorry. I'd rather move back toward you. I'd rather fix it. Even though there's a risk that you'll look at me and go, nope, I still don't want you to get out. Hmm. Right. Um, but what about the other one? What about just the, you had a bad day version and my fear, right? Courage is still the same thing, but instead of, instead of asking, is it me? You know, what did I do? You know, the various versions of like, because I feel this fear, I begin to accuse you. What did I do to you? Or, you know, and and then you're like, what what are you talking about? I just had a bad day. I can begin to say, hey, seems like something's amiss. Are we okay? I can ask the questions. I can ask it openly and and without fear. And this is the funniness because people are like, well, that's what I did. And I'll say, well, well, tell me what you said. I came (laughs) in, I said, what's wrong with you? Are we Okay. You see how fear put an attack in it? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, your fear was doing the talking. You said the right words, but fear was talking. The fear tone was there. (laughs) The fear tone is there. (laughs) And and that's very difficult for people to recognize. They think, oh, I said the right thing. If fear is the thing that's doing the work, it doesn't matter what you say. Because we feel it. We feel your fear, even if you're pretending. Yeah, but even if we're pretending we're not. So you said something really profound, and it's really the takeaway, even before we end the the episode, is that courage is the opposite of fear. Is that Mm -hmm. how you said that? Or is courage the pathway to break free of fear? How would you describe that? So I actually, if I'm ever, ever to be loved, I have to risk being hurt. I have to risk vulnerability. And for many people, that's an, uh, that's a non-starter. They're like, no, I want to be invulnerable and still get love. And well, that's impossible because mm-hmm. the same hole in your heart that opens up to let in love is the one that lets in pain. They're the, they're the same one. You can't, you can't have one without the other. And so if I can accept that this might hurt, that there might be something really wrong, this could even go, go badly, but that's okay because I'd rather find love than as soon as I can have some degree of acceptance That's how courage works, right? Courage isn't the ability to go, I'll go in because I know I'll be okay. Courage is the ability to say, I might get hurt, but I'll still go in. And that's really required. If you want, if you ever want to be loved, you have to risk getting hurt. And that's going to mean moving forward with the desire to bring well-being to the other, even when there's parts of your heart that are ringing going, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Courage. Well, and even as a life coach, I'm sitting here listening to you saying, so in many ways, the work in a relationship to make it thrive and grow and be the best that it can be, it's not only working on the relationship because what you've described is there's a certain courageous kind of attitude and a certain fullness and aliveness that I need to bring into the relationship every day. So I got to be doing work on myself. Yes, that's right. And I've got to be making sure I am well and I am healthy and I am whole. I'm not perfectly right, but at least enough that I actually have something to give. I'm not a life taker, but I actually, my propensity is to be a life giver. Let's talk about the opposite version of this for just one second, Please. because some of your listeners right now are going to be freaking out going, I had courage. I kept pressing in and the other person kept dragging me out and using that. Okay. Okay. See, cause one of the ways that fear works is it causes us to control. It causes us to say, because I'm afraid I won't be loved, I'll, I'll, I'll try to guilt you into, into loving me. And so I might say something like, if you were a good fill in the blank, then you would, right? Mm-hmm. And people who've been in those manipulative relationships, we don't have time for it, but you and I, the last time we talked, I think it was, we did one called caring isn't, or controlling isn't caring. Yes, we did. Right? That would be a great one to like balance this out, to recognize fear tries to control or it tries to run. 
Love stays still and never controls. It's really, really scary place to be because you is. might not love back. Well, and it's funny. I'm trying to think of those kind of poems or those things that you'll see pop up as plaques that love sets people free. <laughs> to make their own choices, right? There's a sense, but that feels scary. It, well, it's terrifying. Yeah. Because the second I believe you don't want to be in this gift-giving game with me, I either have to accept it and in resignation, allow the relationship to die away, or I'll do this game where I'll say, if, mm. or you should. I'll start using shoulds. I'll start yeah. using bartering. little controls, bartering, mm-hmm. anything to try to get this to come. But it's so dangerous because if I do that, uh, we play this gift giving game. If I say to you, uh, you know, you've got a Christmas present in your, in your hands and it says for Steve on it. And, and I say, I'm afraid you don't really want to give it. If I say, if you're a good friend, you'll give me that gift. Even if you give it, I know in my heart, my manipulation is really what caused it. And if love is the ability to will the good of an other, I know my will caused it. Hmm. I won't believe you loved me, even though you did what I wanted. There was no love because my heart knows my manipulation caused it, not your choice. So it's not just that it's bad for the other person. Mm -hmm. It's disastrous for you if you try to control because you get what you want, except for you don't get loved. Yep. I love, this is so insightful. So let's pull back the lens a little bit. Obviously, we're talking about these three words, fear, repels, love, in the context of relationships. We focus the first part of our conversation on romantic relationships in our final Mm -hmm. few minutes together. If you pull back the lens and look at other relationships in the workplace or in family or in friendship, are there different expressions of this Mm -hmm. that in those different contexts? Yeah, well, the further you get from that romantic relationship, the less the gifts are required. Okay. Uh, I, I sleep with my wife like every night. Like there's a lot of intimate gift giving, not that kind of sleep in the right. same bed. Come on <laughs> now people. No, but, uh, we we're close. And so there's an intense gift giving there that then goes a step out as a parent. We give gifts to our children with little regard for how much comes back because children don't have a lot to yeah, get back. They're not very good at that. Uh, brothers and sisters there. Mm-hmm. And then as you go further out into like, let's say your roommates or your friends, Yes, the rules get a little safer at each step because there's less vulnerability ultimately. And yet, whenever those relationships are not working, even there, even though the the, the intensity's not there, fear's there somewhere. You you mentioned friends, and I wonder one of the reasons it might not feel as risky risky is if I have you know, 12 friends or 40 friends. And Mm -hmm. yet this one friend's pulling back for me. It doesn't feel the same as if that romantic other is. And then I'm guessing if you even pull back further and you think about your workplace or your company or your business, you're not necessarily looking to those people Mm -hmm. to love you and be a gift giver. You're like, Hey, I'm doing my job and I'm getting a paycheck. I've earned it. But still wherever it's not working, I don't care where it is. Like if you're working at uh, Taco Bell and there's that one relationship at Taco Bell, it's not going good. Why is it is, and everyone wants to sit, call it a communication. Oh, we have a communication problem and you have a fear problem hmm. and fear is entering into your communication. If we can find where the fear is, maybe the fear of prestige at a workplace, maybe the fear of you getting it promoted instead of me, or maybe the fear that you're going to like harm my well being. whatever it is, wherever fear is, that's where the problem okay, is. Okay, Steve. So you've just opened another can of worms, which I want to go down this trail. And I, I'm really interested in this idea that communication, when people say we have communication problems, you're saying, no, no, no. The root of that is you're afraid of something. Well, yeah. And it's in your communication. <laughs> okay. Right. So that's what you feel. Oh, it feels like. So the husband who, who's like, I feel like we have a communication problem and I'll listen and, and I'll ask some questions. But what's really going on is at some point, maybe he feels like she really doesn't love him. Maybe she feel like maybe one of the partners feels like they are this far in and the other person's only this far in. Mm -hmm. And that if I can help them find where the fear is and usually, and this is somewhat stereotypical gender exists because of the stereotypes form. And I don't want to overplay the stereotypes, but for generally speaking, the wives have a terror that their being is not enough to make him want to come back. So you know, it registers as ugly and beautiful on the like the the uh, the the uh, overt uh, the surface scales. But what's really going on in the heart is: Do I make him want to return to me? Am I like a magnet that draws him back? And men tend to again, this is stereotypes, but men tend to have a fear that um, this person doesn't believe I have what it takes. 
They think I'm useless or inept or whatever. And there's that longing to feel like, no, I really do. At least one person in this world says, you know, in the old Spider-Man, go get him, tiger, you know, kind of a feeling. Okay. There's so much here. So these are bite-sized podcasts. Mm -hmm. So we'll pick this conversation up, I'm sure, in another way, in another time. It'll be fun. Um, But give us some final thoughts. Every time you have a painful relationship, first admit to yourself that your heart probably wants to either run away or to attack. Those are the t- two places we tend to go to. Okay. Okay. And because the attack says, if I hurt you first, you, you won't hurt me back. The run says, if I run away, you can't hurt me. If we can recognize and grab hold of that fear, it may be an accurate fear. Like your boss really might want to fire you. And that's probably why you're feeling afraid. It's not that it's always inaccurate, but recognize what abandonment, what place of losing well-being does this present to you? If you can find where you're, and try, people, I'm not afraid. Yeah, you're afraid of losing something. It's mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Find it, ask if it's accurate. And then if it's inaccurate or if there's that opportunity, do you have the courage to move forward anyway? It's not love is blind and instead is eyes wide open. You know, even as you sit here and talk with me and our listeners and our viewers, I am so, I'm just encouraged and very thankful that uh, we had the vision to start a life coaching company where we can actually not only help companies and businesses, but also human beings. And I'm guessing even people who are listening in today, if they're having some of these really challenging um, situations within their relationships, they can reach out to us and they, I can put them in contact with you or we can put in one of our coaches to be able to kind of work through this because this isn't easy work. This sounds really hard. And yet I think we'd want our, our viewers and our listeners to know you're not alone. Hmm. And what Steve just described is very common for all of us. And there's actually pathways to healing and to growth and to actually evolution, positive evolution in our relationships. We apply the principles that Steve Risky, you always are teaching us here on three words podcast. So thanks so much for your time. It was a blast. For life coaching, consulting services, or to hire a keynote speaker, please visit dmbcoaching.com.